What's good, y'all? Here with another video. Um, we're gonna be reacting to wrestling premiere, uh, talking about the Royal Rumble 2024. Um, before we even um, uh, get into, I just wanted to say, I think I'm gonna leave this channel to uh, just me rambling, rambling and talking to y'all in reaction videos. And I'm gonna go back to my other channel, which I was doing gaming on. So I'm gonna leave the gaming on that channel. The link will be in the description. So go uh, subscribe to that. You know what I'm talking about? But uh, let's just get into the video, man. Royal Rumble 2024, I mean, it was cool. I gave it like a seven and a half out of 10. Wasn't nothing too special to me. Um, there were good parts, there were okay parts. The crowd could have been better, but we should get into it. It's that time of the year, WrestleMania season, a season of excitement and optimism. However, this week has been marred in controversy. Vince McMahon has been accused of a bunch of things and along with the company sued by a woman over some allegedly horrific stuff. This is a big stain on the company, the likes we haven't seen since 2007. It's no dramatic, oh, da, da, da. this is actually a big deal. One of the most controversial things I've ever seen in wrestling history. I'm mentioning this because it would be weird not to. Vince stepping. It's, it's crazy because uh, out of all the allegations and all the situations that he's been in throughout the time that he's owned WWE, you would have thought that none would make him step down or even sell the company, and he's done both. The era of WWE without a McMahon in like charge is crazy. That's crazy. Down over this is huge. He's completely gone, and this was in the midst of a very successful week with WWE signing a deal with Netflix and The Rock assuming a high position in TKO. It's a very deep topic that, at its worst, could lead to the removal of several people in the company inside the ring and outside the ring. With that said, there was a high level of excitement for this Royal Rumble. WWE had done a great job of building up the show and providing intrigue and interest to the men and women's Royal Rumble matches. And already, right when the show began, Pat McAfee made his return. Okay, let's get into it. Royal Rumble 2024, the road to WrestleMania begins. Let's get into it. Okay. The first match in the show was the women's Royal Rumble match. Now, I'm going to say, it's a Royal Rumble match. I was going to like a part of it the moment it began. Why? Because I'm a battle royal shill, and WWE made sure to get your attention having Naomi return after nearly two years. There was yeah, some surprises was... with Jordan Grace from... Her, her coming in at number two was like a, like everybody knew that she was coming back, but I didn't think that they were gonna do a like off rip like that. So when I had her, her interest me, so I'm like, oh shit, they not waiting, they not wasting no time. This is cool the too. knockouts champion coming into the rumble it felt a bit weird to see her there especially because michael cole is on commentary wwe locals are all over the place and her dropping the likes of bailey it's like what the hell other than that the women's rumble was pretty dry it wasn't bad i'm gonna get into it in a moment very generic basic action going down there was a nice Kyrie sane spot with her turning into spider-man chelsea green lasted longer than the previous year bianca hit a crazy ko all right i don't mean to keep pausing but i gotta say this honestly the women's match was probably because of the ending was probably one of my favorite matches on the card um because the ending just had so much star power and so much stuff going on with it granted he did say that it, the the women's rumble was kind of lackluster but here's the here's the thing i made a short about this i feel as if the women need a mid-card title instead of a instead of them tag team titles because if you let the people who aren't in the big spotlight cook and and uh you know lock in with their characters and actually uh you know they get to be in a limelight in another situation you know what i'm saying that's why you don't have to have rhea ripley just be facing random women you can actually build those women up by having them in a mid-card situation like a chelsea green and uh you know ivy now has potential all these women have potential and you don't want to keep pushing the same couple of people. So a mid-card title would definitely help out. So that way, like, if they're doing good in the mid-card, they could potentially go up and fight on, for the big one. And it actually mean more. You know what I mean? Like, you could build other stars besides having them in the Money in the Bank match for the women. I mean, you know what I mean? So definitely wanted to say that for sure. Deion Jordan Grace to eliminate her. Zelina Vega had me believing Eddie came back for a moment. Nia Jax Thanks. was throwing people around without technique. Like when she'd eliminate someone, it was uncoordinated. Our truth thought he was in the rumble and basically cost Valhalla the match. There was some NXT entrance and surprisingly no women's legends. I think right. it's WWE trying to show off their current talent. Jade Cargill finally debuted and looked like the megastar, a mega talent that likes the industry hasn't seen. 
She looked extremely strong out there and had an amazing showing. She ragdolled Naya and threw her out, and it was a big, big, big ass moment. One of the biggest moments on the entire show. Tiffany Stratton was Jeff Hardy for a moment, and Liv Morgan mm. was the 30th entry. The ending was great with Morgan dropping Cargill, leading to Bailey capitalizing and winning the match. Bailey was the Raw Rumble winner. It wasn't shocking, nor should it be. But I thought she was very right. deserving. It would have been insane if Jade Cargill won. I'm going to say it right now. Like, if she came in, won that whole thing, that crowd in Tampa would have gone insane. But with Bailey, the other three women and the four horsewomen had their standout moments, especially at WrestleMania. She doesn't really have that. And since 2020, Bailey has been putting over talent almost to her own detriment. She's been in the background with the damage control story recently. They're trying to build it up as the group trying to isolate her away. And I personally like this because a face Bailey has great potential. Like, I don't expect her hugger character to come back, the right. ponytail tied up, none it of that. I don't expect to. that. I just expect a new version of Bailey. you know, yeah. something we haven't seen before. Other than that, Naomi and Jade looked great out there. They established a lot of feuds for WrestleMania potentially with Bianca yeah, and Jade being one. A big pop. And when you hear all of this, you think it's an amazing match, but it wasn't. There was a lot of moments that were dull, insignificant, and very basic. And it's not really going to stand out, but I think it was a bit better than the Men's Raw Rumble match. That's because a lot of the women on the roster are not built up properly because maybe they need to work on their character or maybe they need to be in more uh, serious situations and maybe they need to just be on TV more. You know what I mean? Like a lot of those women, you I don't even think you see them on TV for real, for real. So it's like because they, they have those tag team matches where they just put tag teams together for the tag titles like once every other week or something but it means nothing because they're not building nothing with the rest of the roster they're only building up the certain amount of women when they could be building up a good amount of people that's why they need to make card title man bailey winning was the right decision i'm very interested in seeing how the damage control yeah, story it was definitely goes. Better than very interested in seeing jade cargo potentially feuding with bianca belair decent stuff the next match is a fatal four-way match for the Undisputed Universal Championship. Roman Reigns defends the title against Randy Orton, LA Knight, and AJ Styles. A match that had some hype behind it, especially because Roman hasn't had a multi-man match in a while. AJ Styles gets bigger every time I see him. Randy Orton has a lot of hype behind him, and they're taking things slow with LA Knight. This match is a bit disappointing. It didn't have that heat about it, which yeah. I thought was unfortunate. Roman hasn't been doing much. I heard him say filet mignon once, but with the time away, you'd, ex you'd expect some big quality from him. And looking at the match, I don't remember much with him. The other three, though, got things going and the match picked up. It took a while, but when it did, there was some nice spots. Randy was hitting RKOs and had the match won when Solo Sokoa came out. Same old interference. I think he got hurt. They don't care. Roman takes advantage, doesn't stack the wrestlers, but managed to win in the end. AJ took the pin, which wasn't surprising. The other two had more things going on for them, but with regards to the match, it was very dull in the first half. It picked up, but I can assure you that if this exact match happened in 2021, it would have been way better with Roman putting in more work. And yeah, I thought it was disappointing. The title reign has nowhere to go after WrestleMania. Solo interfering is the same old story, and I thought it was a disappointing match. Randy yeah. Orton was electric. LA Knight had the crowd on his side, and you could see potential world champions in the future. Orton is probably Randy winning that 15 hurt. title sooner rather than later, and LA Knight's push is only getting started. They protected him here, he didn't take the loss, had some great moments, and as I said, Randy Orton and LA Knight were the two standouts in this match, they just were. Alright, the next match was the United States Championship, Logan Paul defended the gold against Kevin Owens. I'm not gonna lie, I sometimes forget Logan Paul's the US Champion, I do see him around with it, whether it's with John Cena nah, or thanks. Ruby Rose, but he hasn't been around much. With that said, this match should have been better. WWE clearly saw how Logan Paul's been doing, probably told him to take it slow, because he's out here doing limb work and having a different style of wrestling. The allure of Logan Paul involves him being that arrogant supervillain all about the acrobatics and glamour. Like, I know some of you guys aren't a fan of the spotty wrestling, but I think it works very well with Logan Paul. He did bring some of that later on, but it was clear they limited that. I think this match is a case of WWE overthinking. If this was 2022 Logan Paul, this match would have been better. The ending with Kevin Owens taking Logan's brass knucks and dropping him was well done. The referee suddenly became intelligent. It caught me off guard. I thought KO was going to win the title and caught him leading to a DQ finish. It was nice. Owens destroyed him after the match, and it's clear that this feud isn't over. I'm pretty sure they're facing off at Elimination Chamber. LA Knight is probably next up. It makes too much sense. It really looks like he's about to hold championship gold. What better way to win a title than beat Logan Paul at Wrestle... Well, actually, that doesn't, that doesn't sound good. What better way to win a title than win at WrestleMania? So we'll see. And the main event. I think the reason that they didn't do too much... I actually liked the match, personally. Like, I wouldn't say it's the craziest match ever, but it was one of the better matches on the card, uh, in my opinion. I feel like the reason that they didn't go all spotty or whatever is because I guess they're trying to look at his progress as a regular wrestler instead of just doing spot after spot after spot. 
Um, granted, we will see that, like, see more spots in the future, but I think that they were just trying to see, like, how good he is as, like, with basic wrestling techniques and everything. Like, that, I think that's pretty much what it was. He want, he probably just wanted to show more of his, like, wrestling than just doing fucking spot after spot after spot. Which, that isn't bad, but, like, you know, I think that, I think that's, that's what they was going for. Men's Royal Rumble. This was the most interesting match on the show. CM Punk and Cody Rhodes eh. in particular were seen as the favorites. But as for the match itself, this had some problems. Jay and yeah. Jimmy started things off, and already you could feel how much Jay has advanced when compared to Jimmy. Andrade finally returned it's to the WWE. It was nice to see him come out. He looks bigger and a bit different when compared to how he was a few years ago. Andrade is most likely a face as evident by his interaction with Santos Escobar, although that's not a guarantee. We'll see how things go. Bobby Lashley came in and didn't do much. He's not the same booking-wise, especially because two years ago he was beating the likes of Brock Lesnar and holding the WWE Championship you'd expect him to go very far Rumble felt like the mid-card Rumble for the most part until Cody Rhodes came out Ron Breaker had a great showing dropping everybody in sight I'm assuming this was supposed to be Brock Lesnar's spot it makes too much sense Pat McAfee was probably gonna eliminate himself after seeing Brock and Omos R-Truth entered and ruined everything for JD McDonough he thought it was a tag team match and this spot was one of my favorites in the entire match it was so cool seeing R-Truth thinking it's a tag team match having Dom tag him in and he's out there doing shoulder the tackles like he's John Cena. It was cool. The ring starts filling up. More of the top talent is coming in, and Sami Zayn entered at number 30. Now, I knew Sami Zayn was going to enter at number 30. People out here, again, this is the problem with the Royal Rumble. People think it's always going to be shocking. They thought Kazuchika yeah. Okada had a chance of coming in at number 30, which is funny, but it was Sami Zayn. Drew and Sami interacted again, and for their sake, I hope that's not the WrestleMania match because we've seen a little bit too much of them recently over the last couple of months i think it'd be a disservice to have them have the same match at wrestlemania but i'm sure it's better than nothing jay got thrown out drew screwed up gunther was out and there was two cm punk and cody Rhodes. punk and cody's battle somewhat saved this match i will say though that punk seemed exhausted and worn out he needs to get some of his stamina and endurance back he was shouting he wasn't waiting 10 years to lose to dusty's son and played the heel there was a lot of tension between those two and i'm very interested in seeing a feud between them cody managed to catch him off guard to win the match Cody Wings somewhat shocked me. It wasn't shocking, like, <gasps> but I thought it was CM Punk's nut. I really thought yeah. CM Punk was going to win here, but I'm assuming Rollins' injury changed plans with Punk. But it might not even change plans. It might have just been a situation where, well, it probably changed hands, but I kind of was like, why the hell did they even do this, make him a two-time winner, even though that they were hinting it the whole time that they were doing the final two. But looking back on it it makes more sense if you think about it because on monday night raw there's multiple people in that realm of uh the royal heavyweight championship and seth rollins seth rollins has a lot of people that want that championship like in the mix you know drew you got you know they probably could do a chamber with you know number one contenders chamber with drew punk gunther maybe like um yeah, Drew Punk, Gunther, probably like Jay or Sammy or some shit like that. You know, just putting people in the mix because they're all like, what, well, Damian Priest? Like, you probably, like, they're all like intertwined with each other. So it's like, they could they could do a chamber match out of that. So that, that kind of makes a little sense. Winning, he can't really interact with the Rollins. They can't brawl, have those tag team matches or whatever. You know, you guys know how WrestleMania built for a world title match is. He can't go straight to that immediately because of how things are right now with Seth Rollins. They could start the feud after Elimination Chamber, which also allows for Punk to get in better shape because this guy needs to wrestle some of the lower mid-card wrestlers to improve his stamina, endurance, his timing, everything like that. Because I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be completely honest, I thought he was a little bit off during his match at the Rumble. As for Cody Rhodes, I would say it's a foregone conclusion, but last year happened, so there's that. We're in the same position as last year, except this time Cody Rhodes has gone through trials and tribulations to get back to WrestleMania in Philadelphia. He made no doubts about his status, he made no doubts about his choice, he immediately chose Roman Reigns after the match, which I thought was cool. You know, they're not trying to make us worry, oh, maybe he's going to face Seth Rollins, oh, yeah, what I is like he going to do? I like no, we're going for the rematch once again. Now, personally speaking, I don't mind rematches at WrestleMania. The thing is, the match has to be good. These two, they proved they were capable of having a special match last year, so I'm very interested in the story. And for Cody Rhodes' sake, he's got to finish it. You know, I'm not going to lie to you guys. We need to see a new champion. For there our came sake. a point during Roman Reigns' run where I did not care who would beat him, but I think Cody Rhodes is the right guy. You know, WWE's going to push him hard. Fans are probably going to turn on him later because he's going to be the generic good guy or whatever, but in the time for the moment, 
I'm very interested in seeing him win that title. I want to see it happen. It makes so much sense for the story. And it's going to give a good end to the Bloodline story. The story has been going on and on. They have Solo interfering constantly. It's dragged on, you know? We got to see something new. It will also allow for us to see the Bloodline as a positive story entirely. It's one of the best stories WWE has ever done. And it would be a shame if they just extended it just for the sake of it. But yeah, Cody Rhodes is the Royal Rumble winner. The match itself wasn't that good, I'm not going to lie to you. At times, it was pretty boring. I was shocked Roman and Seth were watching the whole entire thing with us. They were probably bored out of their minds as well. But yeah, WWE has had a lot of great Royal Rumble matches recently. Sasan 22 comes to mind. Last year was a bit off. And there's just something lacking with the matches. The pacing... The fact that for half of the match, there was just mid-card wrestlers in there. I think they should have added some bigger stars in the beginning. But yeah, it, it was a decent match, you know? It's not a bad rumble. It ain't 2022 Raw Rumble. Freaking Brock Lesnar winning at number 30. Shane McMahon, awkward moments or whatever. It wasn't that. It was a decent rumble, but it could have been better. So yeah. yeah. All right, that's the Raw Rumble. This event wasn't that good. I'm not going to nah. lie to you. There were some moments here and there, but like every match could have been better. From the Women's Raw Rumble to the main event itself. All of them could have been better. You know, I had some expectations in the matches, which, again, this is the problem with WWE. They give you these high expectations for the pay-per-views, and when it matters most, they disappoint. Match of the night is probably the Women's Raw Rumble. I think there was yeah. a lot of good moments in there. The Men's Rumble, the Punk and Cody encounter saved it a bit. I know Punk was a bit tired and exhausted, but I really liked his interaction with Cody Rhodes. But yeah, Match of the Night was Women's Raw Rumble. Bailey winning was nice. The booking decisions in general during this show were good. And I hope WrestleMania turns out to be a good one. So yeah. I want you guys to get the Royal Rumble. Please comment down below. That's the first video. Make sure you hit the pop-up power bomb and the like button. That was a good video. Um, yeah, like he was right. The Women's Royal Rumble was the best match of the night. Like I said, I gave the Royal Rumble like a 7 out of 10. I feel like, and he was saying like it's a mid-card rumble, like for the most part. I feel like WWE has this problem like, they've gotten better at it, like, building stars, but there are certain points, especially, I just feel like the women's division could be better than what it is. Like, literally, the women's division could be better than what it is if they just give them a mid-card title and let them build their characters more. Like, people like Tegan Knox and Candice LeRae and uh, goddamn Chelsea Green, like, you have to let, like, you got to really have conversations with them, like, hey, like, we know you, well, like, Tegan and Candice, like, we know you was cool in NXT. Let's get that fire back, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, we, Chelsea Green is probably going to win the Money in the Bank contract. It's probably, it's probably the best situation. But there's other women on the roster that have potential to be great. And I feel like the mid-card title would just... Like, that would be a big addition to it. You know what I mean? But I'm done rambling. That was a good video. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, and uh, I'm out, man. Peace.